guys, today we're gonna paint, uh, my name is Thijs and we're gonna paint the Iron Throne from the uh, Song of Ice and Fire Minch game Kickstarter set. It's a beautiful piece, uh, it's quite funny that it's only a priority marker, uh, it's made by Kumini or not, and today we're gonna paint with uh, Games Workshop paint. Uh, I primed it black with the GW spray paint. Uh, I've got some paints ready, also the new contrast paints and the new layer and base paints. So this should be a real fun experience. Um, first up, I'm starting with an... Well, it's not a really covering coat, but it's uh, it's more than dry brush, that's for sure. It's uh, like a sloppy base coat of Iron Warriors. It's a more darker steel color. Uh, it's a base color from Citadel range. Uh, it used to be a forge hot paint, I guess. Um, but I thought it would be real nice to have some oily steel look uh, from the thousand swords that are in this iron throne. I'm going to speed this part up and I start off with the, uh, the center of the model. It should always be the focus of the model and I think um, yeah, well starting that first uh, uh, and be a little bit more precise in the center and be a little bit, a little bit more sloppy on the sides is just fine. Especially with terrain pieces like this. Uh, it's all about looks, it's not about precision. Uh, but you can put, put in a lot of detail in a lot of steps and uh, when putting in detail it can be quite overwhelming such a large model so I would always recommend to um, add the detail in the center of the model and luckily for this model there's quite a, a straightforward center it's the stairs and the, the seat itself so that should really pop out and uh, I think uh, We'll do just fine. I also like the asymmetric look of the of the chair. One side is a little bit taller than the other side, and the rings of swords really make the model stand out as a thousand sword model. Uh, just covering all the pieces here and there, looking from all sides. I also like to put my um, miniature in different directions so I can get a little bit more perspective on the model, not just the front side, also twisting it around, turning it upside down, and I think it really uh, helps in the end result. Uh, I think we're gonna go for the next step right now, and the next step will be a, oh, first I'm gonna wait for it to dry, and the next step will be a quite hefty shade of Agrax Earthshade. Um, when applying a shade, you should always wait for the entire model to dry. Uh, as you see right now, I'm waiting it for it to be dry. I wasn't really uh, too patient, to, to be honest, but I thought, yeah, you see me touching the model, trying to figure out if it's dry or not, but I use a lot of water in my base coat. So in the crooks and crannies, it's still a bit wet. And you probably won't see, yeah, you see me struggling a bit to, um, I'm a little bit stubborn right here. I'm just gonna put, in, put on the, the Agrax Earthshade and uh, I think it will be just fine. It's uh, gonna be a messy look. We're also gonna weather uh, the entire model later on. So uh, a bit more variance in, in color and, uh, and in tones is, is, is no problem at all. Uh, first I'll try to do the center uh, uh, first. And I think Agrax Earthshade really gives a nice brown uh, base shade for the entire model. It gives it a little bit more more of a dirty look, not too dirty. Could be rust, could be dirt, could be grease or grime. That's uh, it's a really nice color to work in, and I think it's uh, it's a go-to shade um, compared to the other ones. Um, and next up, we're going to start with something uh, new. That's the contrast paint. That will be contrast black templar. As we all uh, know, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, uh, the throne was made by Dragonfire. And I really like the look, uh, to create a look of a bit of soot and a bit of uh, burnt steel. So I used uh, the contrast paint, because the contrast paint has a, a lot more pigment than the shade and sticks uh, more on a specific spot and doesn't flow into the, the crooks and crannies as the shade should do. Um, it's a really nice paint to really spot those uh, yeah, the, 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 those burnt edges of the swords and uh, and you see me also ignoring the steps a bit. Um, the steps should be a bit more, uh, yeah, 
m clear because it's been walked on. Uh, I'm now applying a coat of Castellex Bronze, also new layer paint, on the hilts of the swords. And this is what I mentioned with uh, putting in a lot of detail uh, on the places that really stand out, like the center. So I'm really uh, making sure I get all those hilts and, and, and detailed pieces of the swords that are uh, represented in the model. On the back side there weren't that much, but on the front, especially the seat, there were a lot of uh, hilts to be painted. And next up is uh, that's going to be the highlight. I really try to be really careful with this one. It's Stormhost Silver. And I used Stormhost Silver. I started off with the edges of the uh, of the stairs with just the side of my uh, my brush and really make them shiny like they were walked on a lot this should be the most shiny part of the model because this is being used more than let's say the top of the model where nobody can reach uh, due to the sharp swords um, I think this really stands out um, I also used another contrast paint I forgot to mention that there was skeleton horde to give a more dusty look and I also used that uh, on the sides more than uh, we're more than in the center I think it, uh, it has been there for quite a long uh, time right now, so uh, it should be a bit dusty, especially in, so in a very boring throne room. Uh, I now mixed up uh, more Star Wars Silver on the dry brush, because the other pieces will be a bit more sloppy, but I think it really suits the model, because um, there hasn't been a lot of wear and tear on, on the back or the, or the standing sides of the model. And I'm Going back in with a bit of Iron Warriors to touch up the stairs. It was a bit too bright for my taste. Um, and I think you should always try to go back and you can also, also apply shades in, in other steps if you like to. This one is the brightest, uh, the bright weathering I'm gonna try and this is a rust effect. I used uh, Jakira Orange for this, uh, watered down extremely. And don't be scared. Uh, as you can see it's really bright right now but this will be toned down a lot when it's dry um, you shouldn't be scared about this because you can always tone it back down with Agrax Earthshade or a black wash or uh, a bit too much weathering is no problem with Chikara Orange watered down and the watered down colors look a very bright that's because um, uh, the water makes it look shiny at first but when it, mats, uh, it, it dries, it will be matte. And when it's uh, like a satin finish, finish you, wouldn't, you will never notice the shiny spots. So it really sticks out right now, but don't worry about this. This is, uh, this is just perfectly fine. I really spotted it down, because I think the grease of the swords will uh, prevent a lot of rust. And that's why it's still so shiny. As you see in the movies as well, there isn't a lot of rust. And um, now I'm going to touch up the hilts because that's more copper color with uh, watered down Sotek. Uh, it gives a, a really nice patina on the on the hilts, and but it doesn't make it pop as much as a normal uh, copper patina would. So it's just uh, just small details that make it really stand out. And this is the final result, uh, all dried up. You can clearly see the Jakiro orange spots being all toned down. You see the uh, skeleton horde contrast paints as a kind of dusty look on the sides. Uh, and this is where you see the Sotek really pinpoint those hilts, but don't over exaggerate it. This is the back side. A little bit more rust because this, this side wouldn't be much in, uh, in view and wouldn't be walked on uh, or touched more than the, uh, the rest. And that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any comments, uh, let us know. And thank you for watching.